This video focuses on how you sign up for and set up payroll in QuickBooks Online. This will not be covering the QuickBooks Online full service payroll, which is an option in QuickBooks Online, whether you use Simple Start Essentials or Plus. It'll be covering and it'll be focused on the do it yourself QuickBooks Online payroll. Now, whether you're coming from QuickBooks Desktop or you just set up a new subscription, or maybe you're a pro advisor or accountant at a firm you have, set you up a QuickBooks Online subscription, there is some setup involved. Now let's talk about converting from desktop first, which was my scenario, but anybody watching this who has just signed up for QBO or has had a QBO subscription set up for them, you'll be able to follow along and, and set up your payroll to, to run payroll from this video. There are a couple resources I wanna share. First off, there's a nice survival guide, uh, QuickBooks Online from desktop, so converting from desktop to QBO. And, or from enterprise or Mac. So it's kind of an all-in-one shop when you're converting. And then what's important is why some data doesn't come over from QuickBooks Desktop. So when you click on that link, then scroll all the way down, it's pretty much A to Z, scroll down to payroll. You know, it does talk about how it is supported, you can switch. Most of your payroll items will come over from the desktop edition. The transactions, uh, the payroll accounts are converted in order to balance a book, but the transactions come over as regular checks, same with your liability payments, at least at the time of this video they do. And you do have an opportunity to set up year-to-date amounts. Now, sometimes those year-to-date amounts will come over and affect the payroll module, but the desktop payroll and online payroll are completely mutually exclusive uh, from one another, and they don't really merge or integrate for the most part. So often you'll have to enter year-to-date amounts. And then it goes into some of the adjustment transactions, um, those will convert as journal entries, and then most of the employee information will be uh, converted over as well. Scroll up a little bit in this knowledge base article, you'll see what information would come over for employees. And since I've already done the conversion, and if you're not sure how to convert from desktop over to QuickBooks Online, uh, please check uh, the video on the QuickBooks University or my own product video site on converting. That's quickbooksproductvideos.homestead.com. The next helpful resource I'd like to show you is this quickbooks.intuit.com slash tutorials slash setup dash payroll. And I'll leave it there so that you can write it down. And it actually gives you screenshots on where to go to set up payroll. I'm going to do this. I'm basically going to run through it. And you click on employees, get started with payroll, and then we'll move on uh, from there. Okay, so I'm in my QuickBooks Online subscription. This is post-conversion, but even if you just started out or your accountant or pro advisor set up a QBO subscription for you, the process is gonna be the same. You're gonna click on the Employees tab in the left-hand panel. Now, four of my employees from desktop already came over. If you're just starting out your QuickBooks Online subscription, you'll have no employees here, and there'll be a tab over here to get started with payroll. Then you're gonna see an option to whether you want the experts to do it, which would be the full service payroll where Intuit handles all the, the tax payments as well as the forms, and you're just entering hours and cutting the paychecks and doing the direct deposit, then you send it to Intuit, or the do-it-yourself QuickBooks Online payroll. Once you choose that you're gonna do it yourself, you'll have an option to run through the payroll setup that I'm gonna do uh, right now. However, I've converted from desktop, so my employee names came over and a lot of their information. Another thing to point out, too, is if I go to the gear icon in your account, even in the free trial, payroll is usually turned on. There's an option when you're starting the free trial whether you want uh, the online payroll, the full service payroll. So you can see mine is already active here, and I'm just in the free trial. If your accountant has set up online subscription from QuickBooks Online Accountant and they sent you an invite, it, chances are that the payroll will be turned on. Or again, when you go to employees, you have that option to get started with payroll and choose whether it's full service or the do-it-yourself QuickBooks Online payroll. And then from this point on, you know, we're all in the same boat. I'm just going to go ahead and click complete payroll setup. Notice you can chat live from 6 to 6 Monday through Friday and then 6 to 3 Saturday Pacific time with a payroll agent so you can get help as you're going. You're going to fill out the business name, which should already have come over when you set it up, the address, of course, and of course about uh, the employers, and then you click continue. Then you're going to choose, have you paid any W-2 employees in 2015? Yes, if you've paid them, remember, it's going to give you a year to date. Uh, so I'm going to say, yes, I did pay employees in 2015. And then you can choose the date range. And then how did you pay your employees, lump sum payments, or did you, you know, pay a check, whether it's direct deposit, et cetera. This is just going to allow you to eventually in the wizard that you're going to go through to set up payroll in your QuickBooks Online file, 
to have the opportunity to enter the year-to-date amounts so that the online payroll is taking out the correct taxes going forward for the next payroll run. And then you're going to add employees here and the ones you've already paid, or you're going to set them up and you, just to click add an employee. Anything with a yellow means it's missing some information, typically from the W-4. So you're going to go in there and uh, fill that out. So let's go into myself just to see. And you click, you know, here's the first name and last name. And if you're setting up a new employee, it's going to be the very similar options that you're going to have. So I'm going to go to the enter W-4 forms because I'm probably missing some information here. Yeah, obviously the home address is what you're going to need. So once you have filled out, you know, valid address for the employee, the filing status, there are some, uh, in my case, it's California. Uh, there are some other tax exemptions. And here's where you would, you know, if, if I don't have to pay FUDA or Social Security, et cetera, then you would uh, check them off. But obviously I, I pay all those and there's no exemptions there. And then you go ahead and click done. Next, how often do you pay? And you know, um, you can add a new payroll schedule if you like, right? Every week, every other week, what have you. I think these are the options every other week, every week, twice a month, every month. And you can choose to use this schedule for all employees that I add after myself. If I go back to that page. You know, I was bi-weekly already and starting 918 because uh, I had just done a payroll on 9.4. So already from the desktop, it knows that I had a bi-weekly schedule. So that came over during conversion, which is nice. But for those of you just starting out, not converting from QuickBooks desktop file, you, know, you have the ability to set up payroll schedules. And then how much do you pay for the rate? You can add additional pay rates. You know, this hourly one came over. Uh, and then you can add different hourly rates. And I can also pay for, say, overtime or double or sick and vacation as well if you want to set that up. Um, you just choose, you know, 40 hours a year, accrued start of year, or accrued on start, or a new sick pay if you want uh, to set those up as well. Same with vacation. You have some options on what kind of policy that you're going to do. And you can even kind of create your own, you know, how many hours do I earn per year in the maximum at the beginning of the year or each pay period per hour worked, which is popular, or on an anniversary date. All of these are uh possible holiday bonus commission. And then there's even more ways that I can choose to, to pay myself or pay your employees that are not common, whether it's an allowance, a reimbursement, cash tips, et cetera. So even clergy, household. So make sure you look at all this. You'll know what you need to set up. And this is just where you'd go to do it. Now, what about deductions? And again, I can click edit here and see the deductions that are available, whether it's a garnishment or deduction contribution, and then choose the options, 401k company or employee, health insurance, medical, and then, you know, who's the provider, what's the amount per pay period, um, an amount, uh, is it a dollar amount, is it a percent of gross pay, and then the annual maximum as well. So I'm just going to say it's, you know, 100 bucks per pay period and just click OK. Of course, you can add other indu deductions too. So just click add new deduction if you want. And again, these are all the different options that you have. And I can choose new deduction contribution. And then whether it's an HSA plan, retirement plan, health insurance, flexible spending accounts or uh, other reductions. And then you just keep going from there. Cash advance, loan repayment, et cetera. So it's going to pretty much uh, fulfill the gamut of needs that you would have with payroll. And then how do you want to pay your employee? So by paper check or is it direct deposit? And here's where you can set up Direct deposit, you can even have it go to both the check-in and a savings account or direct deposit with balance as a check. It's up to you. You choose direct deposit, then you're going to fill out the checking, the banking routing number, confirm account number as well on each employee. I'm going to leave mine as paper check. And then how much did you pay Woody so far this year? So here is where you have the ability to enter the year-to-date payroll. And again, at the time of this video, we are working on bringing over the year-to-date amounts from desktop if you're converting. But if you're starting out in QBO Plus or, you know, you've been paying them outside of QBO or some other service and you're switching to QuickBooks Online Payroll, here is where you would enter the year-to-date amounts. So you just click Enter 2015 Prior Pay Details. Did you pay the employee any time between January 1st and, Jan and June 30? And you could say yes. And then did you pay uh, the employee on or after July 1st? And here is where you just enter these columns for year-to-date as of total and then year to date as of June 30. If you're converting from the desktop, just run the payroll summary report in QuickBooks for Windows, or you'll just have a report from the other payroll software that you're using. And again, I am converting from desktop. If you're not, don't worry about this, but those that are, 
you know, you're going to go to reports, employees, and payroll, payroll summary, and then choose this calendar year to date. And I'm actually going to customize by the one employee just for my video example to keep it simple and keep moving. And again, for the desktop converters to QuickBooks Online, it might be helpful to set the columns to total only and then just put those amounts in. And once they're in, then go ahead and click continue. And we use the net pay to double check for accuracy. And if for some reason the numbers aren't matching, uh, QBO will even calculate the net pay for you based on, on what you've entered. But typically, I mean, in my example, I got a lot of Disneyland data. Yeah, you guys should be dead on. And then you go ahead and click done. So once the employees are set up, then you're going to go ahead and set up the uh, payroll taxes. So quick tips before you start. Again, just click the tell me more if you're not sure or contact us with a chat or phone, right? Because we are here to help. Enter, you know, employee details here. Then you enter the business details. If you have workers comp, we do ask this question. If yes, you choose the provider. And we do work with uh, several of them, you know, but it is a pay-as-you-go service. So at this point, I'm just going to click no, but that's where you would set up uh, workers' comp. Go ahead and click continue. And then which, you know, federal tax details, which payroll tax form do you use? In this case, I'm doing the uh, most common, but there's other one, 944. Again, there's no 943. And then how often does the IRS require you to pay federal taxes? I'm going to do it on the 15th of each month, but there are other options after each payroll, at the end of each quarter. And then is your business a 501 nonprofit? Yes, I'm going to say no. Click continue. Then you'll see your state tax details depending on your location, right? I haven't received the California EAN yet, but anyway, what percent to use for the state unemployment? And then how often does California require you to pay state taxes? I'm going to do monthly in, in this case because that's the deposit schedule, but you might have another one and we'll have it in the drop down. Then you click save. Next, tax payment info. How do you want to file and pay your taxes? And if you choose e-file and e-pay, here is where you'd set it up. In my case, I don't have that. I'm going to click manually with paper coupons. But, of course, the QuickBooks Online Payroll supports e-file and e-pay. And then, of course, for the prior payrolls or year-to-date history for what you've paid already, uh, that's what's going to be next. So you just click Continue. So at this point, you'll put in the company payroll totals for the, the last quarter, and you go ahead and click Continue. So once you have entered all of that, now you're ready to run your first payroll. Now, I'm not going to run a payroll because my next payroll isn't due until next Friday, but when you go to the Employees tab, now you'll see the ability to run payroll. You have a little chart and graph of some of your expenses and payroll costs, and then your employees here. And, of course, you can always add an employee right here if you want. Oh, and by the way, please look for my Manage Payroll video, which actually runs a payroll, and you can look at reporting and things like that. This video just focused on setup and sign up. If you go to the gear icon under Settings, you'll see Payroll Settings. And there's quite a few payroll settings and preferences here, uh, dealing with schedules, vacation sick, deduction contribution, direct deposit. You can set all this up here as well through the settings, tax information, electronic services, your accounting preferences, as well as who do you want to receive the email alerts for payday or tax payments.